Last week on the opening telecast of the Professional Bowlers Tour, 23-year-old Randy Peterson, lacking much championship experience, defied the odds by winning all four of his matches en route to his first ever PBA title and the $27,000 winner's check. How sweet it was for the talented youngster, who collected more in that one victory than he had in all of 1985. Yes, there's more excitement ahead and other stories to unfold as we move into week number two on the tour. ABC Sports presents Live for the 25th consecutive year, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today we come to you from beautiful Southern California. And here's a great championship field. In the first match, our number five qualifier, Del Warren, who rolled a 289 in his final game last night to make it to the championship round. He meets 27-year-old Steve Wunderlich from St. Louis, who is seeking his first PBA singles title. Qualifying third, the flamboyant, talented Marshall Holman, whose 19 career titles make him one of the very best in the world. The number two position belongs to Mark Baker, a local hero, who was last year's winner of the PBA High Average Award. The winner of their matches will meet Mark Williams, reigning Firestone champion, coming off a of fabulous 1985. One of the finest fields we've ever had. All live today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the Gable House Lanes. It's been our fortune to come back here. This is the ninth time. And today, live, the finals of the $125,000 Greater Los Angeles Open. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Shankle, and thank you for joining us. Randy Peterson, who won last week in Northern California, this week wasn't quite as fortunate, and finished 30th. But our field is strong. A total of 24 titles. And in the group of five, we have last year's Masters champion, we have last year's United States Open champion, and we do have a bowler looking for his first title. Now, my colleague, a man of many titles, Nelson Burton, Jr. Bo, tell us about it. Thank you, Chris. You're right. We have a yeah. tremendous field today. 24 titles. We also have the Firestone Tournament of Champions champion in the field today. And four of the five players are all American first team players. Now, last week we had tough scoring. I came on and said, watch out. They're going to kill them this year. Well, stay tuned this week. They're going to really murder this pair of lanes. All week long, not one single player in the championship round has bowled a game under 200. The players are averaging more than 230 on the championship pair. Remember, that $100,000 check is waiting for someone this year. And finally, we have something special for all of you today. We have super slow motion action. Many times I've met people around the country said, hey, can you slow down the pin action? Can you slow down the hand release? Today we have it for the first time. As you see the pin, look at the head pin, go to the sideboard. Takes out the 4-7, the ball rolling through the pit. We'll see a lot more of that type of action in today's championship round. So we're ready to go. Look for big scores. Let's have some fun. Chris? So we've shared things before. We might as well share this microphone. <laughs> All right, partner. You're going to see uh, two different lines played by the players here. Del Warren's playing the inside track line. And Wonderlick's playing the outside line for maximum carry. Let's see what happens. Uh, coming up on... Oh! Was that from the... Uh... No, I guess it's uh, not from the sweep. We thought for a moment there that uh, it was something where they'd have to replace the 6 and 10. But... That lonely pin is just that bow, isn't it? Simple spare for Wonderlick to start off with. Uh, the three pin across lane. He practices his spares before we went on the air. But I'm looking for a lot of strikes. Spares will not win today. St. Louis, one of the cradles of bowling. And though, of course, uh, it's your hometown. And you had a lot to do with this young man. And I, I must say that as a professor, you've done a terrific job. 
<laughs> Chris, I can't take all the credit. You've always say uh, you can't win the Kentucky Derby with a donkey, and uh, <laughs> Wonderlick's always had great talent, uh, and really is, is Billy Walden, a good friend of mine out at T-Bowl out in Troy, Missouri, just west of St. Louis, that really brought this man to the forefront. Left plane of this championship pair. Oh, a tough break. What a hit. We saw it last week. We see it more and more often with the top pros. Three pounds, six ounce pins now with the super slow mo. Watch what happens. The ball enters the one three, hits the five. Now the five pin should be taking the eight back, but it goes straight off and chops it off. That's tremendous power, Chris. 28 years old. Good concentration. And he now here in our first match, marked with two spares. Del Warren, a native of Lake Worth, Florida, a very pretty area on the east coast of that uh, sunshiny state. And I must say, here in uh, Torrance, California, Bill, we couldn't have better weather. It's about 75 out there in a clear day. No smog. Strike up. Convent. Why? Chris, the right-hand lane on a championship pair has always been a little tighter as you watch the approach of, of Del Warren. A very short approach. He takes that very deliberate approach to control his arm swing. He's always had a little trouble with his arm swing. There you see he gets the foul line in a good position, leaves the soft ten. Once again, the right-hand lane doesn't hook quite as much as the left-hand lane, but the pair is very compatible for high scores. Unfortunately, the tall, lanky Floridian uh, has an open frame. Leaving the 10 pin on the right. Inexperienced, Del Warren making his first championship round is uh, has to be a little apprehensive, a little nervous out there. So, Chris, after the first three or four frames, I'm sure he'll settle down and get going. But he needs to recover, not to give another open to Steve Wonderlich. On this championship pair, he uh, averaged 240. Now in lane number 13. And, uh, well, all week long, this crowd has been enthusiastic. Well, when they're throwing strikes, Chris, it helps. So we had a number of 300 games this week, six 300 games, and they've had a lot of good action, and that really helps the crowd. Wonderlich has a 11-pin lead, third frame, right-hand leg. First game, and the winner will meet none other than Marshall Holman. Four, six, seven. Wonderlich is basically playing the wrong line. He has a great style, as you can see by his approach. Five-step delivery, ideal push away, good locked arm swing. Watch his hand position, stays nice and steady. Look where that thumb is, doesn't rotate on the back swing. But he's playing the outside line, and Chris, it is just, in my opinion, not the right line for today. So it's an open frame for Wonderlich, and well, as you often point out, the ability to adjust that's one of the big keys. Wonderlich's playing the outside line for a couple of reasons. Number one, when he got in trouble during the week, the 42-game segment of the pro tournament, he played the outside line. He said he struggled a little in practice about 10 minutes before air. He said, I'm going outside. And I simply said, Steve, to me, it looks like the line's inside without trying to overcoach him. He's the guy that got there. But I think the inside line is where the big scores are. All right. And again, high, and again, four, six, ten. And why we say the inside line. This bowling center, the players know very well. And right now, watch the action of this ball as it cuts right through the heart of the pin. Taking out the center, actually he almost had the big four. Gets a very difficult split. He should just try to knock down the six, ten with a little extra speed. He'll be trailing in the match after four frames. <laughs> Steve Wonderlich of St. Louis, last year on four of our telecasts. This is our first match, the winner to meet Marshall Holman and Mark Baker and Mark Williams. More action coming up following this. The series Wide World of Sports, known for its infinite variety, and oh, is that true today? Downhill from Kitzbühel, toughest of them all, and the delicate gymnastics championships the all-around for the ladies from montreal all right here's del warner leads by 14 
as his opponent uh, opened with a pair of spares, two open frames. Now with a strike up after an open in the fourth frame, Del Warren. It's a 10 pin, and he doesn't want to do what he did in the second frame. He missed it on the very same line, Bo. Identical shot. He left the 10 pin in the second frame. He picked up another ball, which is supposedly goes a little straighter to help him uh, convert the spare. Pros and cons of that, Chris, we've talked about it week after week, is no two balls feel exactly the same, and when you pick up a second ball, sometimes it slips off your hand. Warren had that trouble in the second frame. Let's see what happens here. Okay, Del Warren of Lake Worth, Florida. We asked him earlier what he must do to bowl well and win. Well, I have a tendency to uh, muscle my arm swing, and uh, that causes me to wrap it behind my back and uh, causes inconsistency. So when I push the ball away, I just try to keep it real loose. And if I can do that, uh, I think I get a good chance to win. Hi, Mom. Six foot four inch Del Webb, 185 pounder, now in the left lane. Acknowledging his fans, and look at this pocket hit. Chris, watch the action as the ball goes through the one, three, five, and the ball takes out the nine, only hits four pins. An ideal strike. Look at that. Let's, Let's see, see if Wonderlick can come back. All right. Beautiful recovery. Yes. Wife Cindy, who just flew in from St. Louis, where, by the way, uh, my dad told me they're having 60 to 70 degree weather, just like we're having out here in California. She needs to get her husband going here. He's got a tough road to go playing that outside line. Wonder like in just tremendous bowling shape, Chris. There's nobody that I know in the sport of bowling practices more than this young man. He is a dedicated professional bowler. Can you over practice? Not when you're that young. He's so enthusiastic, he loves the practice. comeback. Back-to-back -back open frames, and Steve Wunderlich now with a double. Watch this shot. Just oh. ideal. Look at that ball. One, three, five. And the ball actually drives the five into the nine, and the ball takes out the eight. That's the tremendous power. Look at it from this angle. One, three, five. Look at the power Wunderlich has on that ball, and part of that is the outside line he's playing. Remember, you get better pin action, cut deeper into the pocket from an outside line, but it's harder to keep the ball in the pocket from that line. Now with a strike up, can go back to a 14 pin lead. And on lane 14, the right hand lane of this championship pair, another 10 pin for Del Warren of Lake Worth, Florida. Del Warren, he wants this one. He wants to extend that lead back to 14. Look at the extension, oh a really my. good extension that just like Randy Peterson last week, he knows it's there disappointment. Remember, he left the soft 10 or weak 10 in the second, the weak 10 in the fourth, the solid 10 here in the sixth. Nice cross lane shot. Well, Warren. Very ingratiating personality, and uh, he obviously loves it out here, and of course, this is a big step for him. He finished fifth trying to as Peterson did last week to move all the way to the top. Finishing sixth there this week was Wayne Webb, who uh, last last week was on our telecast. There you see the breakdown today. 18 grand to the winner, 9,500, 7,000, 5,500. The loser of the game you're watching will receive 4,500. stages now. This first match is close. Warren leading Wunderlich by four. The finals of this game after this. Sixth best lane on the Professional Bowlers Tour. It's a $175,000 shootout at the Showboat Invitational next Saturday on EBC Sports. Does he look ready? The United States Open champion, 19 titles, Marshall Holman, who will meet the winner of our first game. He's always a joy to watch, win or lose. 
He reacts. Steve Wunderlich, on the other hand, is uh, cool and collected, very little emotion, but he can bowl, as you just saw when he doubled now in the seventh frame. Trailing by four, he can take the lead. Marvelous comeback, Bo. You have two open frames on your string three. That's the touch of class. Chris, he is not playing what I believe and everybody else believes, the best line to shoot big scores here today. And yet he's so disciplined, so well practiced, he made the comeback after a shaky first four frames. He's taken the lead. Here's a key shot for him, though. Del Warren, remember, for seven frames, doesn't have a double, but he's had every ball in the pocket. Wonderlich needs to get out to at least a 16-pin lead to put some pressure on Del Warren. a little bit more as he knows he, as he knows he is strung four and he has taken a 16 pin lead but up steps uh, Mr. Dell Warren with a strike up in the seventh shooting in the eighth as we replay that last shot the big shot goes 16 pins ahead Wonderlick keeps his head steady on the shot right straight through really puts the pressure on Dell Warren who has not had anything really good happen to him look at let's look at his game strike 10 pin strike 10 pin strike 10 pin strike could have seven in a row but he trails by 16 pins he needs a strike 30 tournaments last year a little over 27,000 earned Eighth year, a member of the Professional Bowlers Association. Del Warren not eligible for the Firestone, but to have a shot today, he has to get by Steve Wonderlich. He led through the match, led through the match. Wonderlich's put together four in a row. Now in the pivotal ninth frame, Warren can take the lead. He needs to put pressure once again back on Wonderlich. A strike here, he'd have a four-pin lead. Wonderlick just working on his own game. Coming up very high, but nonetheless a foundation strike, three in a row. And this is coming right down to the final ball. Tyler, Steve Wonderlick now, ready. Four yes. bagger, ninth frame. Seesawing back and forth, Wonderlick led by 16, sat down, two frames later, trails by four, can retake the lead with another strike. Verted the split, leaving the 6-10, the reigning United, uh, ABC Masters champion. That's, that's a, a great honor and a great championship to win, Bo. Great title, but now there on those last two shots explains why we say you must play the lanes properly. Del Warren pulled the ball a little bit in the ninth frame. He has the proper shot, got a strike. Wonderlich pulled it a little bit in the ninth frame. He went in the nose. Oh, chopping the ten off the six. Steve Wonderlich. The only Achilles tendon I think Wonderlick really has, and he's had it for a couple years, is he's sporadic with his spares, especially over in the right-hand corner. He concentrates on making a 10-pin so much. Chris, in practice, sometimes he gets a little lackadaisical, slides by the 6'10". He's really dug himself a hole. He needs a strike here. The winner to meet Marshall Holman is Cindy, Steve's wife. She knows the situation. For Steve Wonderlick to win this match, he needs a strike right here. Could end up with an even 200 game. Del Warren going at a 208 pace would need a mark in the 10th. Okay, he's talking with Harry Golden, our tournament director, all these years. Waiting for a re rack Chris. I think he wants to just collect his thoughts. He knows it's an important shot, and here he gets it right here. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. I. Uh, He's hit that lane so well, you wonder sometimes. Cindy Wonderlick knows the situation. Must strike. Coming up 
coming through and the chips are down. Steve Wonderlick. Solid in the pocket. Wonderlick's undoing has been the right-hand lane. And one, last week we saw the right-hand right lane be the key to victory. This week again, 13 and 14, lane 14 will be the key to victory. Who can hit it consistently? All right, Steve has done his job. The man is looking for his first PBA singles title. Has a Turing Pro Doubles Championship with Les Zykes. Performed in uh, Erlinger, Kentucky. So now Del Warren of Florida. Strong three, tenth frame, oh, what excitement here in California. Del Warren needs a mark and to fill 13 pins, so he must mark a strike or a spare and a good count, and he'll go on to meet the great Marshall Holman. And he's on the lane and gave him trouble earlier, 14. problem Chris he's had no. all 10 balls in the pocket he's only had three 10 pins this game last night in the final game he bowled a 289 we know he can throw strikes it's gonna be a great match coming up all right with his opponent bowling an even 200 Steve Wendelik Del Warren has moved one step toward his first title but next up will be Marshall Holman we'll have Del's final score after this The Professional Bowlers Tour, today coming from Southern California, is being brought to you by Rich Smooth Meisterbrow, the beer that only tastes expensive. By Firestone, with over 4,000 Firestone retailers from coast to coast. And by Speed Stick Deodorant, the wide stick gives you the edge. Speed Stick Deodorant by Menon. Now the final score of that very first match, a tight one, Del Warren looking for his first win, 228 to Steve Wunderlich's 200. And in that game, one game, 16 strikes between them, four open frames. Now, Warren moves in against the 19-time champion, the reigning United States Open champion, Marshall Holman. The crowd early here now has gotten behind 25-year-old Del Warren. And here he is, he'll be shooting first on the left lane, Bo. A member of the AYBC, the Junior Bowling Congress. He bowled against Mike Albee in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, 1978. As a junior player, was one of the top ranked in the country. All right, he lets Marshall Holman know that he is not an off. Very first frame, a big strike. Okay, here is 32-year-old Marshall Holman. And in all the sports we've covered, Bo, he has to be one of the uh, true champions with his talent, desire to win. Undoubtedly. And he left a seven pen. The great approach of Marshall Holman. Look at the eyes, look at the st steady head, look at how he balances his shoulders, keeps his wrist and hand completely under the ball, directly to the target. Here's the pin action. The head pin goes to the sideboard, knocks out the four and the five. Doesn't quite get the seven. Holman with an easy spare to start the match. Using the full approach. Well done. Man with the blue ball. Here, Mike Dermott, our statistician, Bo and me, and uh, well, this time he wants a real pocket hit. And the winner of this game as we uh, look ahead. Mark Baker, the hometown hero, and then the tournament leader, Mark Williams. So, have some uh, heavyweights coming up, led by this person. Marshall Holman, semi-fingertip grip, tucks that little pinky under there for a tighter grip, up on the left. There it is. There it is, and uh, the intensity, competitive, just shows on his face. Let's replay it. 
see him grimace a little bit as he let go a little extra power that's what he likes I'll tell you what Del Warren up in the second frame needs to get out to an early lead this is a type of condition that Marshall Holman can be unstoppable on you have to get out ahead of him early big strike early in the match strike up second frame and he does just that listen to this crowd they um, have made this young fellow, 25 years old, from Lake Worth, Florida, feel very much at home. And we are in Torrance, California. Next week, Bo, we go to Las Vegas Showboat Bowling Center for the $175,000 Showboat Invitational. And there you see, following that, we go into the Dallas area, Grand Prairie, Texas, for the Quaker State Open, followed by the Light Beer Classic Miami, and then... U.S. Open, which Marshall Holman will try to defend successfully. Del Warren going for a turkey could take a 20-pin lead. Okay. Well, you know, having fun competing professionally sort of reminds me of Fuzzy Zeller in golf, you know, just enjoys doing this. Just an excellent shot by Del Warren. He has never missed striking today on the left-hand lane. The key has been the right-hand lane. Holman left a seven pin in the first frame on the right-hand lane. Let's see if he can hit it here. Oh, yes. Bo, if you were to use that telestrator, it's just perfection, isn't it, to see something like that happen. Holman can even the matchup. This is the type of action we expected. They've seen it all week long. That's one reason the crowd's so enthusiastic. They know these guys can really, really string them here. It's going to take some big games. Holman to even the match, fourth frame. In his first try at the Firestone, he won it in 1976. This is a competitive match. It is all even. Don't go away. We'll be back. While we were away, this man, Del Warren, striking the fourth, four in a row, now shooting in the fifth frame. Running a little behind our allotted schedule. That's why we had to let them bowl while we were away. I hit, and of all things, the four, six, seven, ten. Much appreciated string, stringing four here. What he has to do, Chris, is just basically hit the ball over into the six ten area and hope he can slide the six pin over into the four seven. Went at it the wrong way there. So it's. An open frame for the winner of the first game over Steve Wunderlich, 228 to 200. Warren having nine strikes in that game. String ends at four here in his second match. And the first appearance today of seven championship round appearances in 1985. Last year, regular on our telecast, wasn't he? Marshall Holman now has a four-bagger after opening with a spare. Marshall Holman with just doesn't let up. The great competitor, the experience. Look at the style, the form. Under the pressure, rips the five out. All of a sudden, Del Warren went from 10 pins in the lead to 20 pins behind, one frame. Look out for Holman, Chris. This is absolutely, if I could create a lane condition, perfect for Holman. This is it. Inside line, kind of slick lanes, and a big, enthusiastic crowd that he can play to. You know what happens there, Chris? As simple as this. Marshall just about palms the ball in his wrist, okay? He lays it back there. That's how he gets the power. All right, see him put his hand in the ball. He tucks his little finger under. Now he goes and he gets his shoulders a little too far forward, and the ball falls back on his wrist. You see him feel, look at him, grimace from his wrist there. And what he, he had very sore wrist the end of last year. He said it was healed. He's recovered from it. Let's see what he does on this shot. He has to hold it back on his wrist and not baby it. Marshall Hope, Medford, Oregon. 
The power of Holman. You see that six pin get up and work on that 10. Here he is. Look at the eyes. Del Warren marched over Wonderlick 228 to 200. But it's a whole different ball game with Marshall Holman. He has made one mistake, and here he is 30 pins behind. Six frame. that 10 pen on the right lane which has been plaguing him. Del Warren. Look at how important one frame has been in this match. Del Warren strikes in the fifth frame. He'd have had 40 more pins. Amazing. The scoring system of bowling. One mistake, a major penalty. Important strike for Del Warren right here. You just cannot let the great Holman get out and free roll on you. Very deliberate. For as tall as he is, takes a four-step delivery. Stands at about ten feet from the foul line. Nine strikes in the first game. Here he has six already, but with that open frame. Second game will continue after this. World of Sports. That's right, Wide World next, and next is Marshall Holman, true champion. He has a string of five. And now a 10-pen on the right lane of this championship pair. Holman gets the ball once again in a pocket. The right-hand lane is what we call one board tighter than the left-hand lane. By that, we mean it just doesn't finish that extra board. If you can carry the light hit as Holman did in the fifth frame he could keep the strings going he got right in between cross lane simple spare over the third arrow well well every time there's I guess they're simple for me Chris and tough for the <laughs> these guys the, the 10 pin Holman lets the ball slide out of his hand and just slides in the channel during the week Marshall Holman as unbelievable as, as it may sound missed four consecutive seven pins on f Wednesday night and Thursday night our statistician Mike Durbin was watching him says Bo he was not making his corner spares and there is the other corner Nelson and, and this was the eighth frame and there it is, the pin that has given Holman trouble all week long, as simple as it is. The reason being, when Holman throws the ball wide, it hooks too much and into the left channel. When he throws it down the center, it slides by. Seven pins difference, eighth frame. Holman going at a 227 pace, Del Warren going at a 220 pace. You always know how Marshall feels. And the crowd obviously uh, is behind Del Warren, who won the first match over Steve Wonderlick, 228 to 200, and looking for his first PBA win. Warren, six strikes in seven frames, trails by seven pins, eighth frame can take the lead by three with another strike. the line with body English he tries to guide it in his arm did the, the job earlier Del Warren and now talking to Harry Golden perhaps a re-rack on the left lane six feet four inches tall 185 pounds and we often point out that as we see the re-rack that all sizes can have fun at this game and the same is true of the field of 160 that started here earlier in the week this is one of the five finalists, Del Warren, to come in all shapes and sizes. Good match play action. The first match, Del Warren came to the ninth frame, nip and tuck with Steve Wonderlich. Warren finished with a string of strikes. Once again, a very tight match. He leads by three pins coming to the ninth frame. It's who can perform in the ninth and tenth frames. Warren, three strikes up with a four-bagger. He'd have a 13-pin lead. Well, a 
same enthusiasm, Bo, that we saw last week when Randy Peterson came from way down and to go all the way. He had the enthusiasm that carried him right through, but here's Holman in the ninth frame. Big one. Danced off the deck. Watch the power of Marshall Holman. The ball's in what we call the half pocket position. The six pin lays down the channel. Boom! Up knocks out the ten. That's what makes Holman so much better than the average player. Right now he's trailing by 13. He has a possible 247 game. A strike here would cut the lead of Del Warren's down to just three pins. Did not come up. Leaving two, seven, eight. Mm. Marshall Holman basically just threw it wide, Chris. Just way too wide. He trusted that big hook. It didn't get back. To have any chance of winning, he must convert this split. He did it. Two oh seven through nine. Marshall Holman. Look at it again. Once again, Holman uses power even on the spare ball to convert this a split. Look at that. I asked him uh, earlier, Nelson, with your tip of the week coming up, well, how do you get more speed, more power? He said, I don't do any adjustment. I think power and speed. Just like a baseball pitcher. That's really the best way to do it. Oh. Round of applause for Marshall Holman, who shot a 225. But the man that's looking at the score sheet by Harry Golden, Del Warren. Has strung four, now shooting in the tenth frame, and he is something like Peterson. He needs a strike, a spare, or nine on the first ball. If he gets eight on the first ball, he needs a mark to win. Very deliberate. The reason he stays so close on the approach, Chris, he used to have a five-step delivery. He had a lot of trouble with his arm swing. He moved up closer to the foul line. Allowed him to control his swing a little better. Now he's in a position to win his second game in the championship round. And uh, a handshake from the loser, Marshall Holman, who shot a 225 and was defeated by Del Warren. We'll have his final score as we come back. Warren now, two wins, and he next will meet Mark Baker, a hometown favorite. Yes, this is a live shot from some of the lanes here at the Gable House Bowl in Torrance, California. We have gone through two matches. Del Warren, a non-winner, won his first 228 to 200 with nine strikes. 11 strikes in his 260 to 225 win over Marshall Holman. And now his opponent will be, from this immediate area, Mark Baker. What a match that should be. And don't forget, following us, same day coverage from Kitzbühel, Austria, of the men's dangerous and exciting World Cup downhill. Plus, World Gymnastics Championships all around for the ladies from Montreal. That's on Wide World Today. Great show. All right, it's time for our tip now. And each week, Nelson Burton Jr. Uh, helps all of our bowling games. So there'll be no different today. So watch and listen as both helps you to improve bowling. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is being brought to you by Old Spice Stick Deodorant, 24 hours strong. In lesson number one, we showed you how to find your proper starting position on the approach. Four and a half steps from the foul line, the half a step to accommodate your slide. Then put the ball in the palm of your right hand, balancing the weight with the left. Hold it in a comfortable position for you, whether it be up high like this, in the middle like I like it, or down low like Carmen Salvino or Wayne Webb. Whichever is comfortable for you, by all means use that. And now today the approach. The most important step is the first step. You initiate your approach by taking your first step out and pushing the ball all the way out as you complete that first step. Remember, out on one. Release the left hand. Keep the arm close to your body. Have it down on two. The third step, the power step, 
back on three. Your ball's at the apex of your swing. Your right knee's bent. Your right foot is poised to drive through the shot. Step four is a step and a slide. Keep your arm close to your body. Bend that left leg. Rotate that wrist around the ball as you release it. The fingers go around and follow through towards the target. Remember today's lesson. Out on one, down on two, back on three, release, extension, and follow through on four. Next week, lesson number three is a critical part of bowling, how to find your strike line day after day. Once guys try the 24-hour protection of Old Spice Solid, they may give up their usual antiperspirant mid stick. You're done. Mm. Only used twice. Very short strokes. Fact is, none of these solid antiperspirants help stop wetness as well as Old Spice Solid. These deodorant sprays can't block odor better than Old Spice Stick. So switch now. Sarge, for you. Hardly used. Kind of like your comb. <laughs> switch to 24-hour Old Spice, antiperspirant or deodorant. Now we're ready for our live coverage of our third match in the Greater Los Angeles Open. This man, six feet four inches tall, has won two games, averaging 244, a total of 20 strikes. Del Warren, yet to win, going against Mark Baker, nearby Garden Grove, California. Won the Miller Classic in Miami two years ago. Here's Warren, red hot. And then realism. 4-9 coming up. Starts off with a 4-9. The ball cuts right through the middle. An apparent good hit. The two pin goes to the sideboard. Normally it'll come back and clip the four and knock the four into the nine for a strike. Del Warren a little deliberate on his very first shot of this game. Pays the maximum penalty. He needs to slide the four pin from the left side over into the nine. On the approach to the right, as you can see, Weaves up. I guess he felt he stuck a little bit moving to the line. Obviously going all out, try to convert the split. Okay, now, Mark Baker, many hometown fans, he's looking behind and sort of uh, calming them down just a bit. He has his whole family here and a lot of the buddies he grew up with, 25 years old. Little example of some power. Woo. The contemporary Mark Baker, he's a power player. He's the, what we call the high average award winner on the Pro Bowlers Tour. It's a George Young Award. Chris, in memory of George Young, a great mm -hmm. player in the 30s and 40s. Baker just nosed out Holman last year. Baker, the from Los Angeles area, has his whole family here. by with it a high hit leaving on into six pin and there where Del Warren stuck didn't get a slide that he wanted Baker uh, also noticing the same condition here at the Gable house watch his arm swing and watch the hand action of Mark Baker look he has that wrist cupped and now watch the hand and fingers see the thumb come out of the ball the ball's completely palmed and he rotates around good shot Mark Baker led the first three rounds of the six rounds and it was taken over by Mark Williams who practices off to the right as the tournament leader. Mark Baker doing the proper thing when there's a little sticky spot on the approach when you don't really know what it is just rub your shoe through there a number of times it'll kind of burnish it out or at least familiarize yourself with it especially as big and tall as these two players are six foot four and six foot three. Second frame. Yeah! And following an open he's done it again. Remember coming into this after two games total of 20 strikes and a 244 average his last game a big 260 to Marshall Holman's 225. Del Warren just has stayed around the pocket all the way look at the lane comparison the key has been lane 14 look at how he has done so well on 14 some of that's a little bit misleading because he finished on the right hand lane and struck out every time no spares on 13 hmm Right now, there's just a little adjustment. If you remember that one frame Del Warren was light, then in the first frame of this game, he went high. Let's see if he can split the difference. Oh, 
okay. This is the man that wants to do what Randy Peterson did last week, win his first title. The arm swing and the release of Del Warren. Look at how his arm flares out in the backswing, but he takes that short approach, tremendous turn and loft on the ball. So there's a strike for Mark Baker in the third frame. Baker with a two-pin lead. It's our semifinal match. The winner to meet the tournament leader, Mark Williams. Both these players, basketball players in high school, mm -hmm. and their styles of basketball are mirrored in their bowling. Mark Baker was a scoring machine in basketball. 29 points a game in high school, and he's a scoring machine, an offensive player in bowling. Now it will be a 4-7 that uh, Mark Baker will try and cover. Talking to himself. Get a little of that emotional release. Del Warren, as I said, also a basketball player, a forward in high school. I asked him, he says he was a defensive player, and that's the styles they both play. Del Warren keeps the ball in play. Mark Baker, he attacks. And again, we have a miss, and this time, first time bowler today, Mark Baker from Garden Grove, California. Disaster, now trailing by 12 pins. We'll be back. WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Most dynamic young heavyweight in boxing, Michael Tyson. Undefeated Olympic medalist, Evander Holyfield and Tyrell Biggs. All this season on ABC Sports Pro Boxing Series, premiering February 9th. Back again at the Greater Los Angeles Open as we're running behind our scheduled 90-minute time period. Del Warren, who is destroying the pins here, a strike in the fourth frame, a strike in the fifth frame, as you see, and Baker, who trails after an open. Mark Baker of Garden Grove, California. And we asked Mark earlier what it means to be a hometown favorite. Here's what he said. Well, uh, it definitely meant a lot to me this week. I bowled well all week. They're behind me 100%. I've had some bad luck on TV. Maybe having my hometown crowd behind me today will change my luck and I'll win. Well, probably the bad luck today is meeting Del Warren. Well, he's Mark Baker has made two mediocre shots, to say the least, on the left-hand lane. This is a key shot right here. He's been high the second and fourth frames. He needs a double here in the sixth. Remember last time he missed the 4-7. Acknowledging the chairs, but disgusted. The winner of this semifinal game will meet Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas. So we have them from all parts of the nation today. And in the field of 160, their cross-section of America, the professional bowlers. And coming into the finals here today after 3,430 games, two more today, and this man won both of them, Del Warren. We're in the semifinal match. He now has five in a row, and in his first two games, a total of 20. Chris, he's just absolutely perfect. Del Warren is so well practiced. He, he made himself a good bowler. You see the ball just hitting in the pocket perfectly. The six pin turning parallel to the bowling, bowling lane surface, knocking out the 10. No doubt. And what Del Warren has done in the last couple of years, he, ha he knew he had a marginal arm swing. He shortened his approach, practiced a lot of games. I saw him the last two years as he was getting ready to go out the tour. I went to Florida for a couple of exhibitions. Del came down to both those exhibitions and asked advice on what to work on in his game, and he has really worked on it. Worked on his concentration, worked on his arm swing, and right now he's just showing what he can do. He leads by 32 pins. He has five strikes in a row. And there he might have found out the problem with the approach right there. Something may have... Very cool. Very composed. Taking some debris off the approach on lane 13, the left lane of this championship pair. Dell uh, averaging... Pulled on this pair twice during the competition prior to today. Averaging 240. Has to watch he doesn't get a slow bowling penalty, Chris. On the Pro Bowlers Tour, you have 15 seconds from the time you step up there to make your shot and get it going. Dell is pretty close to that. A ten pin. 
Mark Williams, the tournament leader, keeps practicing off to the right when you hear the pen fall. That's what it is. Warren solid in the pocket, solid 10. That would have been a runaway if he had carried that one. Right now with a conversion, he'll lead by 31 pins. Bart Baker still in the hunt. Cross lane, watch how he shoots the spare. He changes balls, I'm not so sure about that, but he throws it nice and straight. That's the key to spares. Watch it end over and hit the thumb hole. Even. From a burgundy colored ball to a, a black for Del Warren. He's going to be in the money if he keeps bowling the way he has. Baker, though, will be up with the double working. The more things cost, the better they are. That's the of sports next. From Beaumont, Texas, this is the tournament leader, Mark Williams. He will meet the winner of our third and semifinal match, Del Warren, going against Mark Baker. A Floridian against a Californian. This is a Texan. Now, the Floridian, who won the first two matches, shooting in the eighth frame, a spare up, leading by 24. Back in the pocket. Well, we saw it last week. We saw Randy Peterson win the first match and get loose, get his feet underneath him, let that arm swing come through. We're seeing it again this week. Del Warren, a very well-practiced bowler. I would venture to say, other than Wonderlick, Warren practices more games than any of these players because he just doesn't have that gifted ability to save a Baker or a Holman, but he's making up with, it with, with a lot of practice, a lot of discipline. You look in the holes, you can see a, a white thumb hole there. Del Warren has what we call a... Uh, thumb plug or a thumb insert in there and they drill the thumb hole and they put that stamp that plug in there and then redrill it makes a very smooth thumb hole and he's sure getting out of it smooth today mm -hmm. all right well we've seen Del Warren's ball in that position a lot of times, Chris. Solid in the one three. He loves the reaction. He's just bowling so loose and relaxed. Look at his reaction. Right now, he has Baker on the ropes. Del Warren going at a 237 pace. Baker a possible 223. Has to get going. And now we'll have to try and cover the 10 pin on the right lane as uh, the non winners are making an impression here as we're in our second week. Dennis Jakes, last year, last week's tournament leader, finished 54th. Steve Cook, 65th. Mark Roth, 109th. Larry Laub, 136th. And our statistician, Mike Durbin, finished 16th. So Mark Baker, marking with a spare, and he's going against the two-time winner today, Del Warren, and having his problems, trailing by 35. Well, for Baker, the best he can do is 212. Warren going at a 230 pace, unless something uh, such as a gutter ball or. Warren against Mark Williams for the title. 4-7 for Baker. Mark just slightly confused. It's amazing when you're just a pinch off how bad your score can end up. Baker's still right at the 200 mark, but he's had the high hit on the left-hand lane almost every time except the eighth frame. He's been around the pocket in the right-hand lane. Can still bowl a very respectable 200. It's not going to be anything close to what Del Warren's going to have. Warren, a possible 257. And following a 260 in the last game, Mark Baker, who was on our finals television last year, 17, seven times without a win, finishing second four times. But you know the great Earl Anthony, who was a total of 41 wins, finished second 42 times. But the name of the game is to win. Mark Baker. Not bad. 200 game Baker had. Is it still again, we have not had a game bowled under 200 on the championship here. Del Warren in the driver's seat. All he has to do is keep it in the building. Two pins to win and two shots. Yeah, I could bet on that. Stay behind the line. There's the winner right there. All right, leaving a four-pin 
but a victory. Victory number three for Del Warren of Lake Worth, Florida. Now he'll face Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas. Three matches in the scores and look at the bottom name. Del Warren, 228, 260, 236, a total of 28 strikes. The non-winner has earned his way into the finals of the Greater Los Angeles Open against Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas, who last year was fifth, money earned, $123,000. Three PBA titles, there he is, 6'1", 175 pounds. And he is some kind of competitor and he'll have to hit the pocket because Del Warren has been red hot. A uh, practice shot, this particular stroke by Mark Williams. Size of the field, Chris, as you said, 160. The average for everybody, 213. That's up from 188 last week. Mm -hmm. The average of top 24, that's incorrect. It should be 222 to make the top 24. And there's some great men in the field this week. We had, uh, as we said, Durbin finished in the top five. Brad Boeing, Art Trass. Houston was up there. Mark Fay, Skidmore, had Jimmy Certain, Ricky Sajak, national champion former Bob Chamberlain, and Leto Monticelli up there, just to name a few. Brian Voss, Sam Zurich, a great field as we get ready for the championship match, Chris. And uh, this Greater Los Angeles Open is in the, the final stage right now. We send our best to Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, for the owner of Gable House, Jack Kogan recuperating after surgery and his birthday's tomorrow so Jack happy birthday and get well well Mickey uh, Kogan his son manager of Gable House and of course many of you who follow auto racing know that Kevin Kogan is an Indianapolis type racer and this year will be driving for the Patrick team should be competitive should give him a good ride two mm -hmm. players with identical styles have gotten to the top of Boeing the same way hard hard work it's going to be a great match 29th strike this afternoon. Willie Willis nicknamed that man Snap Bean. On our bios, Chris, look at the statistic name next to practice games per week. Mark Williams, 150 games a week. I know that the other man, Del Warren, bowls at least 100 games a week. These guys are disciplined players. Yeah. And the tournament leader gets a break with a strike in the first frame. You know, it's always nice uh, when people are enthusiastic about their hometown, just as he was about this strike, Mark Williams. He said he was born in Beaumont. He would never move away from Beaumont. We can see why, Bo, this, uh, earlier this year, or last year, we did uh, amateur boxing in Beaumont, our first visit. It's quite a town, South Texas. Good weather year-round. Mm-hmm produces some nice young gentlemen, as evidenced by Mark Williams, a gentleman on and off the lanes, a likable guy, and a great champion. Yeah. yeah. So now, the tournament leader puts the heat on the man that's won three games impressively today. And he's up and ready. Strike working, second frame. Listen to this crowd. Let's see how Del Warren reacts. He has never had a guy or a player start a match with a double against him where he came up, and if he didn't strike, he wasn't in the lead again. That's some kind of today's average, 241. He had a 240 average on the championship pair during the week, so he's true to form. The lanes seem to be exactly the same as they were all week long. That's nice to see. Good scoring. The players that hit him are getting the best. Warren's second frame needs a strike to stay even. That's performance, high level. The well, man, Chris, who four games ago was in sixth place in the tournament, he started the championship game off last night. He started with 10 in a row, left a four pin, 289, snuck into the top five, taking full advantage of it as he's in a championship game with just eight frames left to go. And there's the leaders by round, 42 games. Baker led the qualifying of 18. Mark Williams continued to lead right on through the tournament and stayed the top guy. Now in this championship game, for Warren, third frame, double, working. Three bagger. So, Mark Williams 
Must answer the call. There's the shot. You see with that super slow motion, the ball driving straight through the one, three, five, nine pins, the six taking out the ten. When you see the six, the ten pin fall in towards the center of the lane, Chris, you know the ball's entering at the perfect angle to continually strike. So the match is all even after three things, three frames. Three strikes for each professional here in Torrance, California. He's got to like this shot. Mark Williams throwing a down and in, or almost a straight type shot. Has the ball going a little high. The two pin goes to the sideboard, takes out the four. He evens the match up. That is the biggest shot of the match so far because Williams was not expecting a strike. He got a great break. And when a pros can hit high and still strike, it gets him loose. Both players perfect through three. by leaving the 2-5. You know, this year, should we have a perfect 300 game as we look at uh, Mark's wife, Carol, who flew in to see her husband perform? $100,000 for the person that can do it. True Value Hardware, Ed Langto, putting up that money. Del Warren still has an iron to fire for that 300. He's perfect through three. Williams need to convert to spare to stay two pins behind. He stuck at the line, the same spot that uh, two previous bowlers have experienced, Baker and Warren. The final match will continue, and we'll be back to keep you up to date. We're looking at Del Warren, a non-winner. And if you just joined us, he has won three games impressively. Now in the finals against the tournament leader, Mark Williams. Three in a row, fourth frame. Look at that. 31 of 38, Nelson. Bowling sensational, 241 average through three games. Once again, for the second week in a row, we have a chance to have a new champion to go in the Firestone and a player to go through all four matches undefeated. <laughs> Watch his stroke and then his reaction. What a big hit. Mark Williams gave him an opening there in the fourth frame. Del Warren took advantage of it and then takes a 12-pin lead. His mother and father, Marshall and Catherine Warren, back in Florida, should have been proud of that one. It's a very conscientious young man. The first thing he said to me, Chris, today was that I just want to say hi to my mom and dad, then I'll work on my bowling second. So I said hi to his mom and dad for him because he's been doing a great job with the bowling. Fifth frame, he's perfect. There's a pal of mine in Lake Worth that's a fan of this young man, Herb Glass. I can hear them all cheering. Well, the crowd here disappointed that the string ended at four. But I can't tell you how disappointed I am. We've had three 300s on this series of telecasts now in its 25th year, and I've missed all three, Bo, so I can't wait well, to give 100 grand to, well, either you or Mike or somebody <laughs> nice like that. It's early in the season, Chris. I, I think we're going to see uh, much better scoring this year. The players have really upgraded their equipment. I think we have much more disciplined players, much better practice, as evidenced by these two young men, Peterson and Warren, the last two weeks. All right, keeps marking. Uh, the general manager of the showboat lanes, Judy Moore. How can anybody that pretty be manager of bowling lanes, Bo? <laughs> One of the largest bowling centers in the country. The showboat, $175,000 from Las Vegas. Chris will be on the exact same time. Pete Rick Weber, the defending champ. Mark Baker to get back in the match. <laughs> High hit in the 4 7 10. Here's how he has to make this, and he has to go for it in this, in this position. He has to get the ball over here around the, the 4 pin and slide the 4 pin across the lane into the 10. This position, he's trailing in the match. He's in a must situation to go for it. Carol Williams knows that it's possible, but very tough.
gone open for the tournament leader, Mark Williams, and immediately drops to a 25-pin deficit, going against Del Warren. Don't count Bake, uh, Mark Williams out. He's an experienced player. He has a 14-4 and four lifetime championship record in the championship round. He's been to the winner's circle before. This young man has five frames. He must get through those five frames against a tough player. 25-pin difference. Baker up. I mean, Williams up six frame. Carry, get up. His uh, wishes were granted. Get up, he said, and it did just that. He's wearing a wireless microphone, Mark Williams. And now the crowd gets behind Del Warren, four in a row, marking with Spare in the fifth, now the sixth. Pressure has been on him from the start. Started in number five position. When you've never won before, you got you can't look at the scoreboard. You have to keep concentrating on this game. This young man has kept his composure for the first three and a half games. He's now five frames away from a trip to the fire stand. Refreshing to watch. The next frame can tell the whole story. Del Warren in the driver's seat, but he's never won a professional bowling tournament before. Here's a man who's won the Firestone Tournament of Champions. He's beat the best. Look at the difference. Mm-hmm. $8,500 difference between first and second. This man's going to be in the Firestone for the next seven years. That's the right he got by winning it. This man needs to get out of the rabbit squad. He's still a rabbit on Mondays, Chris. This is such a big win for him. And this is the frame that could change it all. If he can extend his lead to 35 pins, he'll be very difficult to catch. 19th in the AC Delco Classic last week. Imagine he started bowling at age 15. So 10 years later, going against some of the greats and uh, showing his right stuff. Well, he just put his best stroke on that. We always talk about waiting for the ball, letting the ball do the work. He did it so well there in the seventh frame. He really has the pressure on Mark Williams. Get up. Again, his wish granted, and it's a double for the tournament leader, Mark Williams. Mark Williams just saying get up. He meets, wants the ball to break a little bit towards the pocket. He's playing a very straight shot. Williams has a tremendous flexibility. He can hook the ball a lot, or he can throw it straight. He led this tournament by going straight down between the second and third arrows this week. He's staying with that style, and it looks good. He's going up against a buzzsaw in Del Warren. And there's the buzzsaw. Williams trails by 25 pins, has a double working eighth frame, can cut the lead of Warren down to 15 with another strike. Mark of a professional, Williams from Beaumont. Only his second full year on the tour, Del Warren. Three wins, shooting 228, 260. And a 2.36 coming into this final. Warren taking his time. He is uh, checking out the rack. He sees something wrong. It's amazing how your eyeballs kind of squeeze together for, for a trip to the Firestone, Chris. They look like they're on spot to me, but I don't have to throw the ball. <laughs> you often point out it's emotional release, perhaps, when uh, they request that and get it. Meanwhile, look at, look at that serious countenance. Look how carefully he places himself. Three-banger. Opened with four, spare in the fifth, and now three in a row for Del Warren. Del Warren right now going at a 249 pace. Williams has a chance for 254. We've seen the kind of scoring today we expected. It's not over yet. The championship has not been decided. 
no matter what Warren does here in the ninth frame, he can't guarantee himself the title. He can only keep the pressure on Williams. You predicted some high scores. Who will win the Super Bowl? How can you bet against the Chicago Bears 16-6 to final? success. <laughs> it's not over yet. The crowd thinks that it mm -hmm. is, but Mark Williams can strike here in the ninth, 10th, and 11th. He could cut it down where Del Warren would have to get a good count and a mark in the 10th frame, and that's no easy thing to do if you've never been there before. A2 going for four in a row. Oh. Oh. Didn't come up, leaving a, the two pin, right line. Well, two shots that Mark Williams has lost off his hand. He lost one in the fourth frame on the left-hand lane, left the two five spare. He lost the ball off his, off his hand in there in the ninth frame, left the two pin in a very important shot. The best he can shoot is 233. Del Warren in the driver's seat. For well, these professionals, it's always a physically and mentally demanding week. 42 games prior to coming to our live finals. And in the case of Del Warren, needing to win four in a row in order to get the championship. And the tournament leader has another one slide by the pocket. Winning the two, four, ten. He, Del Warren won the championship with his bowling ball, and he gets to enjoy it sitting on the bench. A lot of great pros came out to watch this one, Chris. We had uh, some of the old-timers. I saw Jerry Hale was here, two-time national champion Mike McGrath in the audience. Some tremendous spectators. Well, uh, Mark Williams, a gentleman that he has watched this. The old washout drives the head pin right into the 10 pin, converts the spare, Still can finish up with a 220 game. We'll have no games under 200 this week. Great action. We're going to have a new champion, Del Warren. And this is the man that gave a congratulatory smile a bit earlier to Del Warren and then the handshake. And it's a 218 for the tournament leader. It's tough to bowl 218 and lose, but the whirlwind from Lake Worth, Florida. Like Randy, Randy Peterson of Santa Maria, California, last week, the AC Delco Classic. First time winner. If he strikes out, he'll average almost 250. Oh, oh. Four seven. Very much liked by the spectators here, capacity crowd at Gable House in Torrance. We'll be back. The Professional Bowlers Tour is being brought to you by Nestle Crunch. Chocolate is scrunches when it crunches. That's why you'll love Nestle Crunch. By Miller Beer. Miller made the American way since 1855. And by Firestone. With over 4,000 Firestone retailers from coast to coast. Sports next. Well, that face on the left reflecting a spectacular performance. Del Warren of Lake Worth, Florida, the check of 18,000, the trophy from Mickey Cogan. His last game score, 256 to 218 with a 245 average in four games. First time winner. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports from Kitzbühel, Hanencom, Downhill, the most dangerous of them all, World Gymnastics Championships featuring the women's all-around competition. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, Warren defeating Mark Williams, 256 to 218.